Good morning viewers. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the basic things that can be derived from a unit cycle. A unit cycle is a cycle that has a radius of single unit. It could be one kilometer, one centimeter, one meter, but it must be one unit. Since this cycle is enclosed on a Cartesian planes, we know that these two planes are always positive and the coordinate here is going to be 1 and 0 where 1 is the value of x and uh, y equals 0. And here y is going to be 1 while x is going to be 0. But these two other ones are all negative. So we have negative 1, 0. We have 0, negative 1. Remember we say this cycle is a unit cycle. Therefore, this line from this point to this part of circumference is also one unit. And the coordinate at that point is going to be x, y. If we are to construct right angle triangle here with angle theta, we want to now find sine of this angle. Sine of that angle theta is going to be opposite divided by hypotenuse and this is opposite. Opposite depends on the value along y-axis which is equal to y divided by hypotenuse which is one unit and one unit will not change its value. Then for cos of the same angle is going to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse and this is the adjacent along x-axis which is boldly represented by x. So we have x divided by hypotenuse, which is 1. It is also not going to change this value. So we can see that clearly the sign of an angle depends on values along y-axis, where cos of an angle depends on a value along x-axis. Having obtained this, we can see that uh, here is cos theta, and here is our uh, sign theta. Pythagoras theorem states that hypotenuse squared is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. We can see that our hypotenuse is one unit. If you square it, it will remain one unit. Our opposite is sine theta squared plus Adjacent is cos theta squared because of this squared. You can see that this is a trigonometric identity driving from a unit cycle. So this is one of the things I want to show you. Second thing I want to show you is the ratios of 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. So let us figure out their ratios. Let's start with sine 0 degrees. Uh, remember, uh, all our angles are going to be calculated from origin here, round anticlockwise, up to 360. So if we say 0, it means that we have not even started recording any angle. We are on the x plane. And on the x plane, we have this coordinate 1 and 0. Uh, remember that sine of an angle depends on y value. So this is our y, so we say sine zero is equal to zero, and cos zero is equal to one, the corresponding value of x. To obtain tan zero, you know that from trigonometric ratios, tan of an angle is the same thing as sine of that angle divided by cos of that angle, which we have 0 divided by 1 is still 0. So we can see that uh, the ratios of 0 uh, for sine, cos, and tan are 0, 1, and 0 respectively. Now moving on to 90 degrees, we mean this angle. Sine 90 degrees, which depends on y-axis. You see y is positive 1 here. 
So it means that sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. And cos 90 degrees is equal to the corresponding value of x, which is 0. So of 10 tan 90, we say sine divided by cos, which is 1 divided by 0. And you know that 1 divided by 0 is undefined. On defined. Now let us move on to angle 180, which is this angle from here, from origin to this uh, negative x plane. Sine of 180 degrees depends on the corresponding value of y, which is 0. Cos of uh, 180 degrees depends on the value of x, which is for here we have negative 1. And for tan, 180 degrees is the same thing as sine over cos. And sine is 0 and cos is negative 1. This is equal to 0. Now let us move on to angle 270 degrees. Sine 270 degrees, which is on this plane. From origin to this plane is 270 degrees. This is equal to the corresponding value of y, which is negative 1. And the cos of that angle, 270 degrees, is equal to 0. For tan, 270 degrees is equal to sine divided by cos, which we have negative 1 divided by 0, is also undefined. Okay, now let us move to the last one, which is 360 degrees. Sine 360 degrees is equal to the corresponding value of y, which is 0. Cos 360 degrees is equal to 1. And the tan 360 degrees is equal to 0 divided by 1, which is equal to 0. So now you have seen how we can use a unit cycle to find the ratios of these five angles. What I want us to find next is on what quadrant, among these four quadrants, are these ratios said to be positive or negative? An angle here will depend on a positive x plane and a positive y plane. So sine of any angle here will depend on y value, and the y value there is is a uh, positive so we have positive and for cos depends on x value and the x plane here is positive so we have positive as well and for tan is going to be positive divided by positive is also positive this shows that all ratios on this first quadrant are all positive now let us check on to the second one the second one the second quadrant depends on the positive values of y and negative values of x. So sine here depends on y plane, it's also positive. Cos depends on x plane, and x plane is negative here. Tan is positive divided by negative is negative. Only sine is positive here and it's uh, inverse. So we have sine and sine inverse is cosecant. So moving on to the third quadrant, all x and y plane here are negative. So we have sine, it must be negative. Cos is also negative. Tan is negative divided by negative is positive. So you can see that only tan is positive here, and it inverse, which is cotangent. Now let us move on to the last quadrant. This plane is negative, while this one is positive. So for sine, which depends on y, is negative. Cos depends on x, is positive because of this. Tan, negative divided by positive, is negative. So you can see that only cos is positive here and it inverse, which is secant. 
So that is an acronym that will guide you to remember this, uh, which is A S T C, meaning all student tech calculus. So this is an acronym that will guide you to remember this. So the last thing I want us to figure out is how to convert these angles from degrees to radian. The general formula used in finding the circumference of a cycle is theta divided by 360 degrees times two pi r. But complete cycle has an angle of 360 degrees and this cycle again is a unit cycle which has a radius one. So we are going to substitute theta and uh, radius for this, which is going to be 360 degrees divided by 360 degrees times two pi one. This will cancel this, we are only left with two pi. Therefore, 360 degrees is equivalent to two pi. This is our origin. This is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and this is 360. So we can say 360 degrees is equal to 2, 2 pi. And you can see that this cycle is being divided into four equal parts. So uh, this is the total angle on this cycle, 2 pi divided by 4, and this will be equal to pi over two. And if you divide uh, 360 into four parts, you are going to get 90 degrees. So this means that 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over two right here. And this is our 90 degrees is equal to pi over two. From here to here is one pi over two. From here to here is two pi over two which is 180 degrees, 2 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 is equivalent to pi. So 180 degrees is pi radian. This is 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2. This is equal to 3 pi over 2 in radians. And you can see that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi. You know that from here to here is 90 degrees. If we divide it equally, we are going to get 45, 45 each. So this is 45 degrees. From here to here, we have 45. Plus 45, we have 90. Plus 45, we have 135 degrees. Plus, plus 45, we have 180. 180 plus 45 is equal to 225 degrees. And plus 45, we have uh, 270. 270 plus 45 is 315 degrees. Now, if you calculate, we have divided this cycle into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have divided the cycle into eight parts. So we see we say two pi, which is the total, divided by eight. This is equal to pi over four. It means that 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over four. This is one pi, one pi over four, two pi over four. This is three pi over four, three pi over four in radian. This is four pi over four. This is 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. This is 6 pi over 4, which is equivalent to 3 uh, pi over 2. This is 7 pi over, over 4. You can see that we have now converted some of these degrees into radians. You can see here I have divided the cycle into 12 parts. Uh, we have um, 2 pi over 12, which is equivalent to pi over 6. You know, if you divide 360 degrees by 12, you are going to obtain 30. So this is why we have 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90, 120. 
150, 180, and so on up to 365 degrees. So since we have divided the cycle into, uh, into 12 parts, the first 30 degrees is going to be pi over, pi over 6. It's equivalent to 30 degrees. This is 2 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6, which is equivalent to pi over 3. This is pi over 3. This is 3 pi over 6. This is 4 pi over 6. 4 pi over 6, which is equal to 2 can go here 2 times, 2 can go here 3 times. We have 2, 2 pi over 3. This is 5 pi over 6. Pi pi over 6, which cannot be simplified. This is 6 pi over 6, which is 180 degrees. This is 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. This is 8 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6. 2 here, 4. 2 here, 3. This is equal to 4 pi over 3. This is 9 pi over 6, which is equivalent to 270 degrees. This is 10 pi over, this is 10 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 2 can go here 5, 2 can go here 3, so we have pi pi over 3. This is 11 pi over, 11 pi over 6, this is 12 pi over 6 which is equivalent to 2 pi and it's equal to 360 degrees. You can see that the importance of a unit cycle is so significant that we can drive so many things out of it. So this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do have a nice day.